course, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, the newest installment of the MCU, the one they've been saying is an Avengers-level event kind of film, is now out in theaters. Uh, a bunch of uh, people have seen it in, you know, in the past week or so. Ray and I went to go see it last night. And you guys know that Ant-Man is actually my second favorite sub-franchise in the MCU. My favorite is Captain America. My next favorite is Ant-Man. I love Ant-Man. And I love what Peyton Reed has done with this franchise. I love Paul Rudd in the role of this franchise. And been very, very excited to see Jonathan Majors, who's kind of ruling the world right now. Jonathan Majors in this. And to see his Kang, and we're going to introduce, because we know Kang Dynasty is coming, Avengers Kang Dynasty is coming, all that kind of stuff. So, this is a non-spoiler review. Uh, we will be doing an open spoiler review on Monday. Uh, but, uh, because on Sunday which is when I would normally do an open spoiler review. We have our live show that we're doing in Burbank with me, Greg Alba, and, and Christian Harloff. And hey, can't wait to see you guys who are coming for those of you who bought tickets. Um, here's my basic feelings on it. Kang is fantastic. The, all the hype that people gave Jonathan Majors playing the role of Kang was fully deserved. He was a fantastic character. Loved him. He truly was menacing. You did feel the, like, I love it when a villain's out there and you feel like, how the hell are they going to overcome this, right? So I I loved him in that. The movie definitely had the moments of that Ant-Man humor that I love. I love the Paul Rudd Ant-Man humor. Uh, for whatever reason, just the way his character is, it makes me smile. It makes me laugh. I really enjoy that a lot. Cassie. I was telling Rob before the show started, I really thought going into the movie, even though I had high hopes, that Cassie was going to be a character that really annoyed me. All because of one shot in the trailer. This is not rational, but it, it did. One shot in the trailer of her walking out of a prison cell with this look on her face. I was like, oh, I get it. She's going to be the, you know, the hard-edged, emo, gothy, you know, without dressing gothy kind of girl. <laughs> she's going to be about whatever, kind of whatever. And she's just going to be annoying. You know what? <laughs> I really liked the Cassie character. I, I By That's the great. end of it, I actually really, really did like her character a lot. I love, you know, I think my favorite episode of the What If Animated series was the one that clearly showed that the most dangerous individual in the MCU was actually Hank Pym. I love that episode. And for me, this movie, I won't go into why. It's again, Hank Pym is probably the most dangerous guy in the MCU. And I, I, I love that they did that. I won't go into details on why. Some of the action was pretty good, all that kind of stuff. That's me trying to be positive. I did not like this movie. I didn't hate it because of all those, the good positive things I just mentioned. I did not hate this movie. I don't think it is a definitively bad film, but for my second favorite sub-series in the, in the MCU franchise, I, I really did walk out quite disappointed. It's not an Ant-Man movie. Um, in, in either, in either spirit or by the literal definition. See, you, you can be an Ant-Man movie, even if Paul Rudd isn't as front and center as you think he would be, it can still truly be an Ant-Man movie if it is in spirit. It's not an Ant-Man movie in spirit or literally. And that's fine. Okay. Put that aside. Judge the movie on its own merits. Regardless, I still found on its own merits. It just didn't work. There were, I am not accustomed to going, oh my God, I can't look at this in a Marvel film. I had several big moments. Again, we're no spoilers here, so I'm not gonna go into the details on which. I hated MODOK. I thought I was gonna really like MODOK. I really did. I thought I, because I heard some people describing him and he is exactly like some of the reviewers have described. And so I thought from the description, I would really actually quite get a kick out of MODOK. I hated MODOK, hated MODOK. Uh, I, I wish I didn't. There are a couple of actors who pop up in this film who there was no reason for them to be in this film. <laughs> there are entire scenes of this movie that had absolutely no function in the movie whatsoever. And oh my God, there is a plot hole in this movie that once it was introduced, and I won't say what it was, we will talk about it in the, in, in the open spoiler discussion. There's a plot hole in this movie that is so huge that I could never get over. Like once they introduced it, I'm, I was like, they introduced this thing in, in the movie and I'm like, well, wait a minute. If that's that, how does it at all make any sense of this? And I just, it just ate away at my brain the entire time I was watching the movie. And I was kind of half expecting by the end of the movie, they would explain why maybe it's not such a huge plot hole, but they never did. And then 
the movie itself introduces more plot holes, not just with this movie, but of the whole timeline concept that Marvel has running right now, which you and I talked about beforehand, but we can't talk about it on this thing in general. So not a definitively bad film, but at the end of the day, not enjoyable. And, and I'm not going to go back to watch this again. Now, this brings up for me something that I said in my out of theater review and reaction. And I've come to this conclusion. The MCU has lost its magic. I'm not saying the MCU sucks. I'm not saying the MCU is bad now. I'm not saying the MCU do can't put out and does not still every once in a while put out something great. But you see, when I say that the MCU has now lost its magic, what I mean is where every studio will put out good movies and bad movies and you go into a film and you hope for the best and maybe you get something great, maybe sometimes you don't, that's the movie business. Marvel, though, had a magic where every time for years that I would go into a movie theater or an MCU project, I just knew it was going to be fantastic and I would absolutely, absolutely love it. Like there's a stretch from 2014 to 2018, hell, 2019, where it was like, banger after banger after banger after banger. You go in, you just knew it was going to be great. Let's go over to the classroom for a second here. So like the MCU magic is gone because again, like from 20, let's look at this rundown from 2014 all the way up to infinity war in 2018. Hell, we could have even included 2019 in this. What do we got? Captain America, winter soldier. Awesome. Guardians of the galaxy was next. Awesome. Avengers Age of Ultron. Really good, but as the years have gone on and I've watched it more and more, I now truly believe Age of Ultron is also awesome. First Ant-Man movie. Awesome. Captain America Civil War. Awesome. Doctor Strange. Awesome. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Really good. I didn't think as good as the first one, but still really, really good. Spider-Man Homecoming. Awesome. Thor Ragnarok. Awesome. Black Panther. Awesome. Avengers Infinity War. Awesome. It was hit after hit after hit. It had a magic that no other studio had. Warner Brothers couldn't do this. Paramount couldn't do it. Universal couldn't do it. Nobody else could do it. But with the MCU, for year after year after year after year, every single time we went into the theater, they did the unthinkable because making one good movie is nearly impossible. And they were, I can bring up that list again. They were, this is all in a row. Banger after banger after banger after banger after banger. All right. So that's what I mean when I say that it had this magic. It had something to it that you're fine even if you don't have it, but they had something to it where every single time they went in there, they were killing it. You know what's interesting about that list? What's that? Can you put that list up again? So uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, you had Hydra, villain. You saw uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You had um, Ronan the Accuser. Ultron, Ant-Man, you had Yellow Jacket, Jacket, who comes back, whatever. Uh, Captain America, <laughs> Civil War, you had one another. <laughs> Doctor Strange, you have Dormammu. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, you had Ego. Spider-Man Homecoming, you had um, Vulture. Vulture. Thor Ragnarok, you had Hela. Black Panther, you had... Killmonger. Um, none of those people came back. Yeah. They were not part of some larger... Uh, they Yes, they played into... But they were movies unto themselves. They they were not all leading to some other thing, and yet yet they were inter, they were still interconnected to the larger Infinity War. But the story that was being told was confined to those movies. Uh, you know, as much as I love Ultron, there's been no indication Ultron's coming back other than in What If, Infinity Ultron. Those movies worked on their own, and they worked as part of the larger yeah, tapestry of the MCU. Both. It wasn't either or. They were able to do both. They were able to do both. And I think one of the big mistakes of what we're seeing now is, like, I would love to have seen, in the case of Kang, like I was telling you early on, watching this movie. Well, before I, because I want to hear your review of this, but before we get into it, I want, to, I want to finish this. Okay. Because this list. I just want to say that that list that you pointed out is unique. Yeah. And that that's a big change in what's going on now. And see all these movies? This is in a four to five year span. That, like, these movies were, were not all dropped in one, one year. All these movies were in like a five-year span. Okay. 
Now let's just go over the last year and a half. All right. Let's, uh, are we able to get the classroom back up? Now let's look just, uh, just the last year and a half. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I, I like it. Then make no mistake, I like it. Yeah, I did enjoy it. But loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Nope. I, I mean, I, I liked it. It was good. It was like any other studio that had a good movie. Thor Love and Thunder? I mean, I still enjoyed it. I liked it, but it's incredibly divisive and a huge step down from Thor Ragnarok. Black Panther Wakanda Forever? I liked it, but I, I did not... I do not think it's a great movie. And actually, the more I think about it, the more problems I have with it. Hawkeye, I just didn't like. Moon Knight, I ended up being disappointed in. Ms. Marvel, the one thing on this list that I can go, I loved that. She-Hulk was a big swing and a miss. And then Ant-Man 3 now, which, again, I don't think is a bad movie. Again, you look at this list, right? This is the last... And by the way, all this is just within the year up. All this... A five-year span, all this, all within about a year and a half. But as you go down this list, up here, you're like, killer, 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 killer. It had that magic where everything they were putting out was crushing it. Now, I'm lucky if I like it. Nothing on this list, aside from Ms. Marvel, is something that I went to and then came out of and went, wow, that was awesome. Now, if you go back a little bit further from that, like you, you, you got your Shang-Chi, yes, I, I, that was awesome. You got your WandaVision, best thing Disney Plus has put out, love it. But you look at this, again, you compare those two lists. They had the magic every single time. It was a remarkable experience going to the movie theaters. And now, today, it's just another movie studio. Today now, over the past eight, nine projects, now I'm going in like any other movie, just crossing my fingers, well, I hope I like this one. That was never the case with the MCU before. So when I say that the MCU has lost its magic, that's not me saying that everything they put out is crap because there's a number of things on this list I still like, but that magic they had for so many years of everything had that Kevin Feige pixie dust on something that it just, it just had that X factor every single time that we absolutely loved it. And they have not been able to do that lately. And that goes back, Rob, I think, to the previous discussion we had about how much crap they're trying to put out now. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you know you can. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because when you're feeling at your best, the challenges that life throws at you don't disappear, but you're more prepared to take on those challenges. Guys, you know I've been saying for a long time that we need to start prioritizing our mental health as much as we do our physical health. When we dedicate ourselves to going to the gym and looking after ourselves, we we see that as a great step forward for us physically. Well, it's time for us to start taking care of ourselves mentally as well. So if you're feeling it's time to give therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com campia today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Campia. Anyway, uh, Chris, you haven't had a chance to see this movie yet, so we won't go no. to you for your review no. on this quite I yet. I Rob, I work. Yeah, <laughs> Rob, you did see Ant-Man uh, and the Wasp, Quantumania. What did you think about the movie? Okay, here, I have to say at first, everything in it, I love. It's right up my alley. Big Big sci-fi. I mean, as people said, it's a big sci-fi movie. A lot of science fiction concepts that I loved. But here's what I... And I, I, I loved everybody in it. I loved the portrayal of everything. I loved the design. Like you, I wasn't so keen on MODOK. But here's the thing. It just didn't... I couldn't wrap my head around Scott Lang and Ant-Man. I understand the quantum realm. He belongs there, theoretically. But I couldn't... After coming off those two Ant-Man movies, it's so different. And what I enjoyed about Paul Rudd as Ant-Man and interacting with all these characters, there was a charm in both of those movies, both Ant-Man movies. 
you know, whether he's he's expanding a children's toy in the middle of a high a, free, uh, a chase through San Francisco or the climax of Ant-Man 1, none of that charm was in this movie. And I, I felt like I was watching a character that was miscast in his own plot, if that makes any sense. I like that saying. <laughs> a mean, character who is miscast in his own plot. It, that's what I, I really believe that that was true. And I get all this. I understand. I, by the way, I love who's playing Cassie. I saw her on the red carpet. I, I thought she was great. And Jonathan, how how did they get your wife in in this movie? By the way, <laughs> well, I she she for those of you who don't know, you have not for those of you who have not met Jonathan Boyko's wife, and and his daughter, like an incredible similarity between <laughs> the 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 two women in the Boyko family there. Well, and this this movie, it just felt like Ant Man has been not dealing with world ending threats and all this stuff, and it just felt like he was out of place. And when I was watching this movie, Jonathan Majors is so good in it, I I really think that it would have been really interesting to have seen, a, they've never made a villain-focused film, like just a movie called Kang the Conqueror, and, and shown where Kang came from. And I know that he's, we've now seen him, you know, He Who Remains, and now we've seen Kang, maybe different, whatever. And, and, and so we've seen Kang, and he's great, but watching all this stuff i just i just didn't buy into it i wanted to buy into it but i really had a hard time i liked everything that was there i was entertained i'm a little tired of all of the virtual i wish there was a little bit more verisimilitude in the quantum realm oh dude i'll tell you what i just i just felt that i was watching them on the volume state you could just feel it the yeah, whole yeah time. you could feel I never it the whole time. they weren't on the volume no and and i like combine real locations with craziness like you know, I remember one of the things, it's not a great movie, but Annihilation, yeah. like the movie not when you see the shimmer in Annihilation, I mean, clearly there there was real landscapes with that shimmer, and I understand why they didn't go, but I'm, I felt like I was looking at a, a 70s album cover come to life, you know, a prog rock record like Yes Songs or something, and that mm -hmm. was... All cool, but even this picture. Well, I said like month, like weeks ago or months ago, like I don't believe there's anything on the other side of that mountain there, that hill. No, there's not. Yeah, no, you just feel it. They're in the volume with a, with some rock prosthetics in front of it. Yeah, it felt like a TV show to me. Like in a way, I hate to say this, but I love Land of the Lost, but it was kind of a Land of the Lost vibe. You know, you're looking at things like nothing is. There's not one shred of reality in any of this, and that was that was another thing that that. I, I just didn't I didn't buy into the whole movie. And I didn't buy into the whole movie because I felt that Ant Man was miscast in his own film. And listen, I Even I, though that doesn't make sense to say. Tell me if you agree with this. Like, even though I came out disappointed in the film, right? I, again, I don't think it's horrible. I I don't hate no. it, but I I see there are people out there who really like it, right? There the the, the audience the critics are split, like half of them yeah. like it, half of them don't. I think the audience ratings are going to be pretty solid. This, like, for people who are coming out liking it, I could see why you would come out liking this. Like, I do. Like, I can totally see why, and why it will appeal to to certain people. I I just I wish it did for me. And again, to me, it speaks to that larger issue that I just feel like Marvel has lost their magic. I also think, like, when I was watching Loki, Loki was the first time that I felt that the Marvel Cinematic Universe was pushed too far into the fantastic if that makes any sense. Because even though you're watching all of these other movies with all their craziness, I still felt that there was some grounding to Earth. Like, like if you have aliens come to Earth and battle in New York, they're still battling in New York. You know, you go to Titan in Infinity War. Okay, you've gone to a planet. I get that. I, I can go to an alien world. But it, it one of the great joys of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is they've always made you... You believe that those characters, you believe that Tony Stark could live in Malibu. You believe that. You watch Iron Man 1, it's like, that dude's probably out in Malibu. You know, I've been to Malibu. I've gone to Malibu for 30 years. He could live there. I didn't believe what I was watching was real. Yeah, I, and I think going too far. And then it pushed, like with Loki, I've, uh, that was the first time I felt it. They went too far, dude. I, too far. I don't think the box office in this film is going to be strong at all. I think it's going to have, I do think it's going to probably hit that 95 to $100 million opening weekend, but I don't think it's going to have legs. I don't think a lot of average film goers are going to be rushing out to tell their cousins or their moms or their whatever that you got to run out and see. I, I just, I, I don't know. We'll see, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I'll tell you what. See, magic is an interesting thing. You can lose it quick, but you can get it back quick. 
Guardians 3 is coming. And I got a lot of faith in that movie. I got a lot of faith. The Marvels is coming. I have a lot of faith in that movie. So the magic can go, but the magic can come back. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for it as we head into that. Anyway, guys, question is for you. Did you have a chance this weekend to see Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? Or not this weekend, but it just opened yesterday. But if you have, what did you think? I think there are going to be a lot of people that really do like this movie. And I think that's awesome. All film is subjective. The art hits us in different ways. I wish it hit me in a better way. But again, when I go over those lists about, here's how Marvel used to do it. And here's what we're getting lately where it's like, maybe we'll like, I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.